Come on down, please. And push the bar on that black box there. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I got to wait till green right. Looks like we've been disconnected, so I'll time we're, you. We're here. good. You go right ahead. Okay. Hi, my name is Renita Harmon. Um, I'm here today because I was told that this is where you start at to get the law changed. I understand that when I was little, people used to always build houses and stuff, and they weren't putting bathrooms in and building houses to standards. My grandmother, my papa's mother, she owned a big house, five bedroom, big one on big land or whatever, but they didn't have a bathroom. So I understand and changing rules and regulations on trying to get people to change how they live. But now that we got coronavirus, homeless, y'all keep track of a crime. You need to keep track of homelessness too because it doubled last year. There's reports that it doubled last year. So I know it's doubling this year because of all the people that inbox me, asking to buy the campers that I had for free and for $300. And I had to keep telling people, you can't live in it, though. And they say, well, if I'm homeless, I have to. I said, but you're not going to be able to afford the $100 fine that comes along with it. And what if another virus comes? Is, are, are we ready? Are we going to just toss out a family member who has coronavirus? Are we going to give up our job? Because we're going to need somewhere for that family member to go so we can quarantine them. You know, people are still getting sick. The flu gets us just as sick as the coronavirus. And if you look at all the list of viruses, every year is something new. So when you got a child that's sick, what are you going to do when you need to quarantine them? Are you going to keep cleaning your house? You know how much it costs to pay somebody to clean a bathroom? You know, you, you have to do it yourself. Do you want to take that risk? I, I, I really think that the law needs to be changed. There's a lot of laws that need to be changed. I understand there was laws put in act back in the day when I was young, and I understand why. Because my papa and his brothers, they built their own house on the land. They went to the Army. They got land after they came out of the Army, and they built houses on it. And, and, and my uncle's house, I wanted to restore that, but his house is considered a tiny house if I rebuild it. So it won't meet the standards to where he had built it at. So that means if I rebuild it, it's not going to look nothing like what he had. It's, it's, it's not going to be really no memory of him because tiny homes aren't allowed either in the state of Delaware. You know, in addition to that, you know, what, what are you going to do when you got a child in college and it's too expensive or whatever and the cost has come on you? I have four kids of my own. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't have to let my kids stay with me so my son could take trucking class and, and go to school for security and stuff like that. And my daughter takes CNA classes. I got a daughter now who graduated st straight out of school and works at the hospital and stuff. What if she gets coronavirus, something happened and she can't pay her rent, she needs somewhere to stay? My family has 20 acres of land. I cut the grass. I help pay the bills, put flowers out there. I got seniors there. Where, where, where are they going to go? What if somebody gets sick, you know, and saying that somebody can't live in a camper, if they buy a nice up the model camper that, that's livable, why not? If it has sewage and electricity to it, why not? Like, I'm a caregiver. You want me to stay in a house full of people that's sick? How am I going to care for them? How am I going to go to the grocery store? How am I going to pay the bills and stuff? You know, it, it makes more sense now to allow it. I understand back in my day, they banned single wide campers because they fall apart, they tear up easy, and they're not worth it. But technology, technology has changed. Back in the day, we needed bathrooms. We needed people to change their thinking because they were going to stay old school with it. But now technology has changed so much, and, and really it's more convenient for some people to have tiny homes. You know, excuse me, they, Mr. President. The time, you're, it's unfair to you because you don't have the little red, yellow, and red on there. But I'm sorry. I've been told that well, the, it's okay. past the time. If you can just wrap up, I'll wrap, I'll wrap it, up. it up, sir. I'm here asking that you know, y'all take a look at all the laws. You know, we got the upgrade with the new generation. We got to. We need to. We got to make a change. One more virus. What are we going to do? Just for your knowledge, um, you make some excellent points. And we are actively reviewing the concept of tiny homes and what would be necessary to, to make space and make that permissible. So, well, I think we, we would we, have to we do have a lot RVs of, too. A lot of sympathy for what you're saying. So, 
we, we're going to have to do RVs too because when I try to call to get in an RV park, they're not booking nobody more than seasonal six months because of the law or whatever, and they're scared to death. They said one RV park had to give away. Guy said he got 12 free campers from him. He said he wondered why he was giving them away. I said because nobody could live in them. If you could please close it up. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Appreciate Thank your time. You. Thank, Thank you. you.